Well, welcome to the recording for week 7, December 10th through 16th, and this is the strings unit. And you can see the strings unit is fairly short. Of course, you watch this recording and then do the write-up. Then on Tuesday, you have a couple of activities and a quiz. And then Thursday, you have a quiz and the unit research project. So pretty basic unit. I'll go ahead and move down to strings. And as I'm doing that, of course, you know we have just two weeks left. December 21st is the last date, and I would suggest you turn in all work by December 19th at the latest. That way, if anything needs to be revised, then you can get it fixed and then turn it in by the due date. So now we're into the strings unit. In the strings unit, we're going to look at something called string buffers and string builders. And in the unit, we're going to learn uh, what a string is and how to use it, how to declare a string, store and retrieving strings, strings in Java, and what's called uh, string buffer class. You can see all the graded items here, but of course I've adjusted the class a little bit, so please look at the gradebook to see what things are actually worth and what you need to submit. This is a discussion. We're not doing discussions at all, so don't worry about this. Okay, section A. So first of all, as we always do, we want to look at the Class Connect write-up. So the uh, question one, define a string in programming. So look right here. So a string is a sequence of characters. They can be letters, numbers, symbols. That's what a string is. So you, but you know, oftentimes look at strings as being Letters, we often talk about that, and then numbers are, are, of course, integers. But you could have a string like Ron H752. That could be a string. So that's where we talk about integers and letters, all being numbers and letters all being parts of strings. In this section, in section A, we're going to define a string class, define methods in a string class, look at programming string class, and the meaning of string equality. Benefits of the string class. So by using strings, it simplifies lots of tasks, like finding the length of a certain set of characters, creating a substring, creating a copy of a string, etc. So it makes things much easier for the programmer. So creating a string, you can see this is the simplest way. String name, then you just give it, give it the string name. But you can also do it a number of other ways. You can see different uh, methods that can be used to create a string. And then down here, using constructors to create strings. And on page four, what does it mean that a string class is an immutable type? So that was on page four. So as we look at this, this says right here, hence the class, the string class is said to be immutable. So what that means is that once a string object has been created, you cannot change the characters that comprise that string. So that's what immutable means. It cannot be changed. Now this is going to be useful for later on, so keep that in mind. So immutable means that a string, once it's created, it cannot the characters in that string cannot be changed. String equality. And what this means is matching a string to a string. So, for instance, if we want to look at a list of grades for those high, greater than 50, higher than 50, of course, we would use greater than 50. But using strings, you have uh, some methods that you have to use for strings. Let's go to the write-up. And page 7, explain how the equals method works. Okay. So page 6, or um, what is this? Yeah, this is page 6. This talks about the operator, how it compares strings that are held in memory. It doesn't compare the actual text. It compares to see that they have the same reference. So you can see that Joseph here is the same reference in all three of these. So that would be using the operator's comparison. Now the equals method. So the equals method compares the contents that are stored in an object. So it looks at the text values that are stored in an object, and then it compares them to each other. When they are the same, uh, even if they are different locations, then they are looked at to be true or looked at to be equal. So that's how the equals method works, and that was the Class Connect write-up question. 
So that's the second method of strings is the equals. And then there's compare to. Let's go back to the class connect right up. So he answered the equals one, and then explained how the compare to method works. So compare to compares a string based on each character. It evaluates the string based on ASCII codes, and you've, uh, there's an assignment in this unit on ASCII codes. So you'll learn what those things are. And I think you had that in, in the uh, previous programming class. So you can see that in ASCII, a numeric value is given to each character. So this tells you how uh, the compare to method is, is done, is used. And you can look down here to see what they talk about. So this is comparing uh, N1 to N3. And you can see right here N1, then compared to N3. That's the second case right here. So that's what this question was referring to. And you can look at some notes about these programs. As always, I encourage you to look at those notes as you look, look at these samples. The ASCII assignment. So this one, go to the internet, search for an ASCII table. Using that table, write your first and last name in ASCII code using decimal, octal, and hexadecimal values. So you need to find all three of those values in an ASCII table. And that's just going to be sent in as a text document. What you can also do is just put it as text in the Dropbox. That's a lot easier. It's some string functions. So you can see that there are lots of functions you can put. So you could put length and then whatever the string is, and it would tell you the length of that string. Or you could put two uppercase, and then the string would go between the variables or the, the brackets, and that would convert to uppercase. This would convert to lowercase. Um, concate nate. Concate nate means to shorten objects. So if you have two words in a string, then it would um, put those end to end, meaning it would take the spaces out. So concat is the way that that is. So you can see that there are different commands you can put on strings to figure out what they are. Overriding method. Um, watch this presentation. You could also read down here what it talks about and how overriding is used with strings. Practice activities. Go through this multiple choice. See what you know about strings. A sample string program. So go ahead and look at you know the methods that are used in here. So you want to take a look at what this shows and then see where they're placed within this program and figure out what the program does. And there's some notes on this program. So it's going to it manipulate the, the string in a variety of ways. Practice activity. So this has you try to create a string that would print your name backward, then find the length of your first name. So see if, say when it says backward, that means print your last name, or oh, print your first name backwards, sorry. So if it was Ron, it would print N-O-R, nor. And you can click down here to reveal the answer, see if you got that right. And this um, string class quiz, of course the quiz preview is sitting over here already, ready for you to go. Okay, so that's section A. Now jumping into section B. And let's go look at the um, class connect right up. In section B, okay, how a string buffer class different from string class? So the string, we already saw you cannot change the order of the values of the string. Strings are immutable, right? But string buffer allows you to create mutable strings that you can add to or remove text. So that allows for editing a string. So that's how string buffer is different from a string. So in this section, you're going to understand a string buffer class, differentiate between string and string buffer, know more about methods in string buffer, and write a program using string buffer class. Go back to the write-up. So answer question one, or question five. What is the main reason string buffer is used instead of strings? Well, if you look at this, this talks about how they are different classes in Java, so you can create and manipulate strings. 
I already talked about string buffer. They do the same things, but string buffer can be modified. It can grow and shorten when it needs to, and it provides different features. But really the major difference is their execution speed. So check down here. String buffer is faster than string when performing uh, concatenations, and we talked about that before, the concate command. So this is really the main difference between them and why programs would use uh, string buffer rather than string. Okay, page four. So you can do string buffers in a variety of ways. So look at the three different ways. So just the standard string buffer, just naming it. But, but that is uh, limited to 16 characters. Here you can give it the, um, the, the number of characters, the integer size. That would be more than 16 characters. Then finally, you can specify the value of the string buffer. So that's another way. So you can see there are three different ways that you can create uh, string buffers. Let's go to the write-up. I think I might have a question about that. Yeah, listen and describe the three ways to create a string buffer. So that's page four. Hit okay, page five. So the string buffer class. So you can see how the string buffer class can be created. It can work with more than one process at a time. And the executions are done sequential order, meaning they're done in a row, or the first one, the second one, the third one, etc. So you can see this right here. The string equals B4A. Compare that to down here if you used uh, string buffer. But of course, string buffer would allow you to have lots more flexibility on the variables. Just as with string, there were different commands you could do. String buffer, very similar commands. So the maximum length of the string, the actual length of the string, this present length of the string, reverse, reverse the order of the given set of characters. So you can see the different things that can be done with string buffers. String buffer methods tutorial. So just like with strings, there was a little tutorial on it. So go through this string buffer methods tutorial, and there's the text down there, the script, if you want to read that as you listen to the uh, avatar read it. So string buffers activity. Do your uh, drag and drop, see if you, how well you can do on that. Practice for string buffers. So go ahead and um, see if you can do, use string buffers to do these in a program. And then, of course, you can look the answers down below. Then finally, here's a discussion on string buffers. And, of course, we're not doing the discussions in this class. However, if I go to the Class Connect write-up, I've integrated that discussion into the questions. So you can see pages 8 through 10. String buffer is a class which has the same functions as that of a string class, but characters and strings created using string buffer can be modified. Now, when would you choose to use a string, and when would you choose to use a string buffer? Now, if I go back to our lesson, so that's pages 8 through 10, you're going to need to do a little bit of research on this. So investigate this briefly and form an opinion. So when would you choose strings and when would you choose string buffers? So maybe do a search on the internet, see if you can find that information, because this counts for questions 8, 9, and 10 on the Class Connect write-up. Okay, page 11, string buffer quiz, and I have it posted over here with the quiz preview. And finally, 12, then we have the unit research project. Remember, we're not doing these projects that they have in the course. Instead, you're doing a research project, and I'll get that research project put in there. I don't have it right now, but I'll get that put in. So that's the work for this unit. Pretty straightforward, pretty fast. Probably get it finished in an hour or so, maybe a, an hour and a half. So I look forward to your work coming in, and we just have two more weeks. So uh, please get your work done. Thanks. Bye.